Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Wilson. Thank you so much for tuning into my presentation. I'm a PhD student at Liberty University working with Dr. Wayne Strasser. And today I'm gonna to talk about smart atomization of banana puree in a pulsing twin fluid injector. The objective of our research is to use CFD to evaluate what we call smart atomization of banana puree in a novel twin fluid atomizer through a tenfold viscosity shift. Now you might be asking yourself, why banana puree? Well, it is both highly viscous and non-Newtonian, which is what we want for this case. A viscosity drives droplet size, so it has important implications for atomization. And there are some interesting applications for these sorts of fluids that are highly viscous and non-Newtonian. I list just a couple here. One is manure slurry atomization for energy conversion and fertilizer production. And another would be gel propellant atomization for the aerospace industry. And we introduce uh, what we call smart atomization. And this adjusts for dynamically varying fluid viscosity in the atomization system. So it can be important for something like manure slurry atomization where you've got a fluid with highly variable properties. In this talk, I'll provide uh, an overview of our novel atomization system and some interesting features that we see, and then the controller responses to a viscosity step change where we test our smart atomization concept. First, I wanna inject a bit of humor into the presentation. This is the original banana puree production process as illustrated by my son through a series of pictures. First, intrigue, he's interested in the banana, he's eyeballing it. Second, consumption, he takes his first bite. Third, processing, he's chewing on it. Fourth, delight, he really loves the banana, he's excited about it. And then he starts to lose interest and squeezes and we have some nice shear. And then finally, puree. All right, so here's the atomizer design. Uh, you can see a nice diagram of it on the right. This is a 2D cross cut and it's a twin fluid atomizer with steam as the assisting gas. And we use an inverted core disrupti disrupting design for the viscous fluid. So we've shown this to be better for viscous flu fluid. Normally you would have gas around a central liquid core. Here we have an outer puree annulus with a central steam flow and they meet, interact, and then exit the nozzle. The steam shear leads to puree instabilities and droplet formation. And the steam also helps reduce the puree viscosity, which is temperature dependent. We use a 45 degree wedge model with periodic boundary conditions. And we add a porous media section in the puree annulus to add an extra pressure drop to simulate a piping system. We start, start with a base mesh and refined it twice in the atomization domain for a finer mesh. And we model puree with the Herschel Bulkley model for puree uh, viscosity. So this is a shear thinning model beyond a certain yield stress. And then finally, we model the steam as compressible. Here are some other details of our solution methods and ANSYS Fluent. I won't go into those details now, but they're there for your reference. All right, here are some results from our simulations. On the left is the puree surface colored by viscosity. And I'll play this animation here, and you can see the strong pulses that come. Here's another one coming, boom pulses outward. So this is characteristic of our system. It has a very pulsatile nature. The interfacial unsteadiness uh, with the steam and the puree lead to a pulsing flow, which amplifies the growth of instabilities and ultimately enhances the atomization process. These are highly periodic pulses with a time scale of about 0.001 seconds. So it's about a thousand Hertz frequency. On the bottom right, you can see a side view of this process, and I'll highlight the radio burst event happening here. So the puree is being pushed radially outward and is about to rupture in this burst event. Now, a really interesting aspect of this nozzle design uh, with puree flowing in it is that waves form inside the nozzle. I'll play this anim animation. You can see the waves rising up and crashing down. A new wave rises up 
and then crashes outward as part of this radial bursting event. And they have a rather high blockage ratio. So as I said, this periodic pulsing involves Puri waves forming inside the nozzle. That's characteristic of our system. And we break this wave process up into two phases, first wave formation and second wave collapse. With wave formation, we have the Kelvin-Hemholtz instability, the accelerated steam helps lift the puree, and because of the high blockage ratio, we have a strong pressure buildup on the windward side that is behind the waves. And then as the wave collapses, fr friction at the wall helps trip, so to speak, the wave, and the windward pressure overcomes the inertia. Now, during this wave formation process, the puree continues to stretch down in an annular sheet, and then wave inertia and pressure buildup contribute to its rupture and bursting. Now we'll look at the pulsing sequence uh, with the waves forming inside the nozzle, but from the outside. And we break this up into three phases, stretch, bulge, and burst. First, the annular puree sheet stretches down from the nozzle, and this corresponds to wave formation. Second, the wave begins to collapse, and we see on the outside this bulging of the puree as the pressure propagates through the wave. And then finally, the bursting as the sheet ruptures violently. Finally, in this overview of our system, we'll look at the droplet sizes. Here's a plot that shows the temporal and spatial nature of the droplet sizes. SMD stands for solder mean diameter and is representative of droplet size. And you can see that we have spatio-temporally spatio fluctuating droplet sizes. There are periodic fluctuations that move axially through the domain in a wave pattern. And we've got seven repeating units that are shown here. They're circled in red, so through time, seven repeating units. And then moving away from the nozzle, axially away, we see decreasing droplet sizes. So this is the disintegration process happening as we move away from the nozzle. Now we're going to transition to talking about smart atomization. So first, our controller setup. How do we set up this smart atomization system? We use two PID, proportional integral derivative controllers. The first is a puree flow controller. We'll call this C1. It automates the flow of puree based on pressure drop, and the objective is to main, maintain constant puree pump requirements for varying viscosity. The second is a steam flow controller. We'll call this C2. It automates the flow of steam based on droplet size, and the objective is to maintain atomization quality or consistent droplet sizes for varying viscosity. A couple other notes is that we set these up to prevent the mass flow rates of either steam or puree from going below zero. And we also have the sampling time adjusting as the convective time changes. Before the viscosity increase, the step change, puree and steam are both at constant flow rates. And then we increase the viscosity by a factor of 10 at a normalized flow time of zero, which you'll see on the, on the plots on the next slide. And then we let the controllers respond. Let's look at the controller responses. First, we have our puree flow controller. On the left, we see the pressure initially increases by about 400% in response to the viscosity change. But then on the right, we see the controller responds by decreasing the puree flow, and the pressure also decreases and comes back down to set point, which is the black horizontal line. Note that the puree flow decreases down to 2.5% of the original value. And this will come back, uh, we'll talk about it on the next slide. Second, we have our steam flow controller, C2. On the left, we see the SMD, or droplet sizes, initially increase by about 125%, which we would expect with a viscosity increase. And then in response, on the right, the steam flow increases to try and compensate 
and the SMD then fluctuates around the set point for a little bit, but then it drops below the set point and just kind of hangs out down there. And the steam flow plummets because it's not needed anymore and actually bottoms out at the end. So we see a little more strange behavior with this second controller. So some con kind of concluding thoughts on what this test means. First, we have to ask the question, why the response of C2? Well, the steam flow is being reduced because the SMD is hanging below the set point. And this is happening as the puree fl flow is plummeting, right? It goes down to 2.5% of its original value. So that's what's important. This causes the atomization characteristics to change. We get globs of puree slowly bursting from the nozzle. Small droplets are stripped off. And we have waves, but they're smaller. They're less frequent. And so we go from this original puree flow down to the reduced puree flow. Very small droplets, but very different characteristics of our system. And the problem here is that the puree throughput is dramatically reduced. So this to us points for a need of variable geometry to help compensate and adjust as the system changes. Another note is that we had to alter the controller settings partway through the test. Both the proportional gains were reduced by a factor of four, and we shifted these at a flow time, normalized flow time of 24. This was to account for the adjusting dynamics of the system. High gains were better at the start, not so much later on, and it points to the need for variable gain. And one of my colleagues is actually working on that using fuzzy logic. In conclusion, our objective was to evaluate smart atomization of banana puree in a novel twin fluid atomizer through a tenfold viscosity shift. The atomization system shows highly periodic pulsing at a thousand hertz frequency where internal waves develop, collapse, and the puree ruptures in a radial burst. And droplet sizes fluctuate spatio-temporally in a wave pattern. When we tested our smart atomization system, we found the puree throughput was dramatically reduced, which indicated the need for a variable geometry. And the altered flow rate significantly changed the atomization characteristics. We also see the need for a variable gain to accommodate this, this change in system dynamics. We've also done a lot of mesh independence work, although we don't show that here. That concludes my presentation. I very much appreciate your listening and would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.